What's up YouTube? Capital G here. Today guys, I want to talk about how to steal wins in Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, this is not actually going to be a video about game stealing cards. It's going to be the ideology behind how you can basically get easy wins despite not running the most optimal deck. Uh, now, everybody this past week has been talking about Alexander Thomas's Madoche deck that won the Seattle Regionals. You know, you're talking uh, roughly 350 people, nine rounds of Swiss. Uh, I always think in nine rounds of Swiss, the good and the bad will basically weed themselves out. Uh, there is only so much slug sacking you can do against nine rounds, you know, plus potentially a top eight match as well. Um, there was actually another video I saw by a player or a Yugi tuber named Wizcaster77, and he played at a regional also. Uh, it was in Tallahassee, Florida with uh, Prophecy, and he went, I believe, 6-2, and two, or we'll just say X-2 and two for right now, and he got 19th. And I'm like, these are there, there's one, there's a similarity between these two duelists. And I think most people have come to the conclusion that Alex Thomas's deck was not the best version of, uh, of what Madoche could be right now, but... The reason why I think that you're seeing these rogue decks have a lot of success and why a lot of people need to take note of this is because when you play against what people would consider a top tier deck or just an established deck, there's only so much that the player can do against you that you won't see coming. Like if you play against windups, it doesn't matter if it's round one or round eight. You already know when you see a first turn wind up monster, whether it be shark or magician or rabbit, you pretty much have a good concept of what your opponent is trying to do, what their key cards are, what their key plays are, all the options that they have as far as what the extra deck contains. You pretty much, you, you already have seen the blueprint about a thousand times. But when you play these rogue decks, especially rogue decks that people aren't familiar with, you you summon you're playing Madoches, you're playing Prophecy Monsters. Uh one deck that I'm even considering right now is Watts. And your opponent doesn't know the effects of your monsters. Even if they know a couple of them or they have the general idea of what you're trying to do, they don't know all of your options. I'll give you a prime example. Let's say you go first, you're playing windups, and you, there are a lot of different uh variables that we can take into consideration. Let's say you have rabbit. Four cards in hand and a set warning. And I go and I summon White Cobra. And are you going to warning that? I mean, yes, you leave me without field presence, but dig a little deeper. Chances are you're unfamiliar with the with all the ins and outs of the Watt deck. Are you really going to burn one of the most powerful traps in Yu-Gi-Oh on a simple White Cobra? Now, you do know if I attack, I'll go plus one. But then also, you're, you're potentially taking your life points down, and you really don't have any idea what I'm trying to establish or what my win condition is. I mean, let's just, off the top of my head, what I know about Watts is, I know Watt Cobra is a plus one when he attacks. I know that they have a hopper lock, and I know that they play honest. I mean, that, that's pretty much all I know, and all the monsters can attack directly. But you don't know the ins and outs of the deck, like other established decks such as Heroes and Dark World, where... I mean, the script has been written, the blueprint is laid out, and you know every single thing your opponent is going to do. Also, don't, I mean, uh, don't automatically assume that your opponent will comprehend what you're trying to do just because they read cards. I cannot tell you how many times I played against OCG players or uh, on DN or OCG decks. Like, I played against Madoche and got smashed because... I don't know what the hell he's doing. He's sending monsters back into his deck and playing ticket and all. And it's like it's fru it's very frustrating when you play against something and you don't know what they're trying to do. Like there's one thing to read a card and there's a there's a completely different thing to comprehend it. You know what I mean? So don't ever underestimate that aspect. Just because your opponent says, "Can I read that?" Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. You can read my white cobra. You have no idea what I'm planning. So that's one thing that I think people need to uh, definitely look at. Like right now, I don't think uh, this format is so predicated on just playing a good rogue deck. I think it's just catching your opponents off guard, like playing things that your opponent is completely unfamiliar with. You know, I'm actually considering playing Watts at regionals because nobody knows what they do. You know what I mean? Uh, you look at 
uh, Whisk Caster's Prophecy deck, and I'm like, I know about four cards in that deck, so chances are he's playing against a windup player, and they have no idea what he does. So let me know what you guys think of this. Uh, let me let me know what you guys think is a good deck that you see that is just completely unplayed, completely under the radar, and that if you played at like a regionals, no one would know what the hell you're trying to uh, trying to do. I think Gem Knights would be a perfect example, but all the cards aren't out yet. Thank you guys for watching as always.